Hallelujah, Lord. Um, thank you, Lord, for this uh, opportunity, Lord, that we are gathered, Panginoon, uh, para, Lord God, pag-aralan, Panginoon, ng iyong salita, O oh God. Thank you, Father, sa mga presensya, Panginoon, ang mga kapatid ngayon, Lord, na nag-join, Panginoon. Thank you, Lord, na ngayong araw na ito, Panginoon, kami ay gagabayan, Panginoon, sa pag-aaral, Lord God. I pray, Lord, na uh, kay Sis Sheila, Lord, na gagamitin mo, Panginoon, to exert your, uh, to search your um, word, Panginoon, and to teach us, Panginoon, uh, more of your word, O Lord God. I pray, Lord God, na tulungan mo siya, Panginoon, bigyan mo siya, Lord, ng wisdom and knowledge, Lord God, to deliver your word, Panginoon. Thank you, Father. You you still, you, ikaw pa rin, Panginoon, yung best teacher namin, Panginoon. Hallelujah, Lord God. Guide us, Panginoon, and ready our hearts and our minds, Panginoon, to receive your word, Lord God. It's our prayer, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, praise God. So, una-una po, uh, binabati ko po ang, uh, ang lahat po ng magandang araw. Magandang gabi po sa Pilipinas at uh, magandang tanghali po dito sa Qatar. And praise God po sa sa, sa opportunity po ulit na magamit at makapag-share ng salita ng Panginoon. And mga kapatid, kung meron po akong hindi napuntuhan na verse, please later, kung meron pong ibinigay sa inyo ang Panginoon ng wisdom, uh, mag-unmit lang po kayo and magdag, kung meron po kayong gustong idagdag sa exhortation, please um, welcome po ang bawat isa. Amen? And um, um, yun nga, um, I thank God for this uh, nagawa and even though um, yun nga, sabi ko, parang ayoko ituloy, parang ganon. Pero si uh, by God's grace, salamat uh, tinulungan niya ako na, na magawa yung yung Matthew exposition na to. So praise God. So mag-share screen up ko. Wait lang po ha. Ano? Ano ba? Ah, uh, share screen. Wait lang. Don't say share screen. Isa mo yung trina. Ah, ito. Sorry. Ayan na tayo. Alam ini. Ayan. Ayan. Nakikita po ba yung screen? Ako po. I praise yeah. God. Salamat po. So, ayan. Uh, ready. Um, we are now in session seven, 76. And uh, we will continue to study in Matthew chapter 11. Uh, verses 20 to 24. So, ito po ang kanyang ano, Woe to unrepentant cities. So, praise God. Uh, okay, so let me read po our passage. So, Matthew chapter 11, verses 20 to 24. So, I'm using um, ESV version po. Amen. So, woe to unrepentant cities. So, verse 20. Then he began to denounce the cities where most of his mighty works had been done because they did not repent. Woe to you, Parazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long long ago in Sakloth and Ashesh. As, Ashesh. Verse 22. But I tell you, it will be more bearable on the day of judgment for Tyre and Sidon than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? Will you, you will be brought down to Hades. For if the mighty works done in you had, done, had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I tell you that it will be more tolerable on the day of judgment for the Lord of for the land of Sodom, done for you. Amen. Let's uh, have a short prayer lang po, mga kapatid. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. So, maraming salamat po, Panginoon, sa araw na ito. O, na muli na itinakaw niyo po ang bawat isa, Panginoon. Salamat sa salita mo na ibinigay niyo sa amin, O God. And we pray, Panginoon, that you will give us, Lord God, understanding, wisdom na galing sa iyo, Panginoon. And I pray, Lord God, ang lalabas, Lord, sa akin, bibig, Lord God, ay sa iyo lamang na galing, O God. Lord, kabayan niyo kami, samahan mo kami, Panginoon, Lord God, na maging faithful kami, Panginoon, sa iyong mga salita. At Lord, uh, Dinisin mo ang puso namin, O God, na mafocus lamang kami sa iyo, Panginoon, at gagawin namin ito, O God, para lamang sa iyo, Lord. Pakabusugin mo kami, Lord God. And Lord, hallelujah, this is all for you, O God, and we bring back all the glory. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hallelujah. So, makikita nyo nga po dyan sa screen ninyo, ang kanyang parallel verse po ay makikita din natin sa Luke chapter 10, verses 13 to 15. So, while I was um, reading up po and observing po, 
sa ating text, um, kikita niyo po dyan ang mga repeated words. So, um, ang mighty works po ay na-repeat po siya ng tatlong beses. Then, yung word na done is five times po siyang na, na, na ulit. Then, the word repent or repented is two times po. Then, woe to you is dalawang beses. Tyre and Sidon is dalawang beses po siyang na-mention sa ating uh, verse. And then, the word judgment is dalawang beses din po siyang na-mention. Na so, meaning to say, ito po yung mga keywords po ng ating pag-aaralan sa Matthew chapter 11 verses 20 to 24. So, pinagdidiinan po dito, di, pinagdidiinan po sa verse na to na ang Panginoon ay may ginawa. Meron po siyang mga miracles and mighty works po na ginawa sa, sa lugar nga po ng Corazin, Bethsaida, and Capernaum. And then nagkaroon po dito ng, ng curse ang ating Panginoon sa mga places na ito, sa mga cities na ito. And later po, pag-uusapan natin. Amen. So, ang title po ng ating uh, pag-aaralan ngayon is Jesus the Just. Amen. So, in, in our introduction po is, last week, uh, recap lang po tayo, um, ang title po ng pinag-aralan natin last week is, is Rebuking the, Dumb the Double-Minded. Makikita natin sa Matthew chapter 11 verses 16 to 19, ito po ay tinuro ng ating kapatid na si Bro Mike. At binigyan niya po tayo ng apat na points which is the, the generation which is in verse 16, the expectation in verse 17, the conclusion in verse 18 to 19, the vindication in verse 19. So last topic na po, uh, we learned from our previous topic uh, uh, in Matthew chapter 11 verse 16 to 19 about the people who abandoned their faith as shown by their action of not believing to those who came before Christ. So after all they have witnessed what Jesus did, they still refused to see him as he is or as Christ, as Christ or as a Messiah. So they wanted and they thought that it was Jesus who will be their king or will replace the king at that time. So nag expect po nga sila na may hari na darating immediately. No, yun po ang expectation po ng mga tao ng time na yun. No, the Pharisees and the scribes was looking for a sign or proof that from Jesus. They thought that they should see it or Jesus should show it as he claims who he is. But Jesus rebuked them by saying, that they can't see any sign from heaven. So yung po yung pinag-aralan natin. No? They, expect po, um, they expect the king immediately po na uupo sa, sa trono. And they keep asking God, no? they keep asking the sign. Pero sabi ng Panginoon, they rebuke them, wala kayong makikitang uh, sign from heaven. And sa conclusion nga po, binigyan tayo ng ating kapatid. Sabi nga po, ang mga anak ng Diyos ay patuloy na tinutuwid ng iba't ibang kaparaanan. Ang generasyon ngayon ay sadyang nakakalungkot na kung saan dumarating ang pagkakataon na mag nagiging matigas sa kanyang sa kanyang salita. Hinahanap lamang ang mga gusto, gusto lang hanapin, hindi hinahanap kung ano ang ini-expect ng Panginoon upang sa kanyang kaluwalhatian. Gayon nga pong ugali ng mga tao, no? Nag-expect tayo, no? Hinahanap tayo more on sa ating mga sarili, more on sa expectation po na ini-expect natin. Hindi tayo nag-expect sa ating Panginoon. Sa kabila ng ginawa ni Juan at ni Jesus, hindi ito pinahalagahan bagkus ito ay nilaspastangan pa. No? Sa kabila ng pinakita ng unang-una ni, ni John the Baptist at uh, sumunod ang ating Panginoong Jesus, no? uh, hindi, um, still po, nandun ang kanilang unbelief, unbelief at nandun din po ang kanilang pag-reject po sa salita ng ating mga Panginoon. So, sa pamamagitan ng buhay ni Jesus, ipinapakita at pinatutunayan nito ang kanyang karunungan at nagdadala ng pananampalataya ng tao. So yun po ang binigay sa atin ng ating kapatid last week. So ngayon po, for today's uh, session, we will be studying again. The math, again, again po, repeat po, Matthew 11, chapter 20 to 24. So where Jesus denounced those cities at that time who did not repent after witnessing the miracle works that he did. So in this very verse po, mapapansin natin, no? we can see the strong emotion of distress. Or in other words, the strong emotion of anger of Jesus showed as he was speaking to the crowd. Diba po, kung babasahin nga po natin ulit, sabi niya, Woe to you, Corazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! Diba? Then sabi niya rin dito sa Capernaum, And you, Capernaum, will you, will you be exalted to heaven? Diba? Kung bibigyan talaga natin siya ng emotion talaga, makikita talaga natin dito ang distress or ang anger ng Panginoon. Nung time, po, nung time siya ay nagsasalita po sa maraming tao. So, yun nga po, um, we, hear, no, we hear that God is love and God is holy more often than we hear that God is just. Diba po, totoo naman ito. Madalas nating naririnig po na sa atin, no, na, na, at ma, madalas nating minsan na pag na ang Panginoon ay God is love, He is holy. He is holy, no? 
madalas din nating naririnig ang kanyang mga good characteristic no we hear about the blessings of god but we neglect to highlight highlight that god is a just god amen so marami nga po tayong naririnig na mga preaching nga po mga prosperity gospel na doon na lang doon na lamang po naka-focus about about the, the the love of god the characteristics of god the blessings of god but they they didn't emphasize no that god is a just god also amen and also like say for example before yung hindi tayo nagdaan ng mga trainings ng mga evangelists minsan mas nae-emphasize pa natin about sa love ng lord but hindi natin nae-emphasize sa ating mga chinesheran na ang panginoon ay just din pala so may mga minsan may mga neglect din po tayo talagang nagagawa before and example din po sa mga uh, social media nga po na nakikita natin ngayon di ba um i saw a post bef- uh, before from uh, from a gay no um he is a uh, lgbt parang ganun sabi niya god is love love does not hate love accepts so doon po di ba doon y- parang para lang maano yung kasalanan nila ba mapagtakpan para ma- masabi nila na na tana sa tama sila lagi nilang binabala yung salitang god is love love does not hate love accept which is very wrong po kasi they just stick on that very verse that without knowing the real context po di ba so yun po yung pag-aaralan natin ngayon about the, the, the god is a just god amen so in our teaching outline meron po tayong apat dito una is jesus denounces the unrepentant cities in verse 20 Second point is Jesus warns and repentant cities in verse 21a. Third point is Jesus longs for sincere repentance in verse 21b. Fourth point is Jesus pronounces judgment on their cities in verse 22 to 24. So first is Jesus denounces the unrepentant cities, verse 20. Then he began to denounce the cities where most of his mighty works had been done because they did not repent. So then means at that time po no referring to a to a time specified so the word denounce come from a, from come from the greek word one dizo is strong g3679 which means a strong word that conveys deep indignation or deep anger of distress so meron po ditong um anger po na makikita natin naggalit ang Panginoon distress ang Panginoon during that time po na siya ay nagsasalita sa mga tao so there is a transition between from verse 19 nga po na nagsalita niya and to verse 20 it involves a dramatic change in the way Jesus spoke to those who see him in his public ministry so he denounced or in other translation po sa he rebuke those cities that had a great and rare privilege that is that Jesus had walked bodily in them and public, publicly did many great and mighty works in the midst of them but they refused to repent so ito po yon then he began to denounce no he began to to rebuke those cities that after all na nakita nila ang ministry ng ating Panginoon publicly gumawa ang Panginoon ng mga himala mga mighty works no in the midst of them but still no they refuse they reject no they refuse to repent amen sabi nga, where the most of his mighty works, sa other translation nga po makikita natin, ni mention is, where most of his mighty, where most of his miracles had been done because they did not repent. So the word miracles come from the Greek word dunamis, strong G1 for 11, which means a power, inherent ability, is use of works of a supernatural origin and character such as could not be produced by any natural agents and means. So meaning, no, walang ibang merong kapangyarihan ng gano'n kung hindi si, ang Panginoong Jesus lamang. Ito ay nakuha niya sa ating Ama at ibin, nagaling sa Ama at binigay sa Kanya. Only Jesus Christ has the ability, has a supernatural supernatural power po. Nung, nung time na yun at hanggang ngayon po at tayo po ay naniniwala. Amen? So, Um, from great sermon on the mount, no, he came down among the people into Capernaum. No? Jesus validated his identity by performing one wondrous work after another. So, yung mga previous nga po natin mga pinag-aralan, ayan po, refresh lang po tayo. Ano po ang mga ginawa ng ating Panginoon Jesus? Ano po ang mga milagro niya? Amen? He healed a leper. Ayan po, makikita natin sa Matthew chapter 8, verses 1 to 4. Napag-aralan natin yan. And he healed a centurion servant from a distance with 
nothing more than a command. You know, with a command lang po, napagaling ng ating Panginoong Jesus, ang servant ng isang centurion. And dito din po, he raised Peter's mother-in-law from sick bed. Amen. And then he spent the evening healing all who, who came to him at Peter's house. So nakita din natin dito, nagpagaling po ng may sakit ang ating Panginoong Jesus. And isa din po nating nakita na napag-aralan din natin dito na Jesus di displayed his superiority over the natural forces of this world by commanding a storm at sea to be still. Amen. Wala namang iba po may kayang gumawa niya kung hindi ating Panginoong Hesus no na siya ay nakapaglakad sa ibabaw ng ng ng, 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 ng dagat. Amen. So kinumand niya lang po ang ang storm din pumalma, di ba? Walang iba that time at hanggang ngayon walang iba po may kayang gawin niyang kung hindi ang ating Panginoong Isus. So ito po, nakita po ito, na witness ito ng mga taga Bethsaida, ng mga taga um, Corazin or Capernaum, narinig nila ito, no? but still they did not repent. No? One, marami po ang marami pong ginawa ang ating Panginoon. Ito po, nilagay ko lang para ma-refresh po tayo kung ano po ba yung mga mighty works mo, mga miracles na ginawa ng ating mga Panginoon. It, isa din po ito, he displayed his authority over the spiritual realm by casting demons out of the two demon-possessed men of the Jerusalem. So, yun nga, no? Nung time na yan, papalapit pa lang si Jesus, nanginig na sa kanyang dem, ang, ang demons, di ba? Hindi pa nagsasalita ang Panginoon. Parating pa lang siya, takot na takot na sa kanya ang demons, di ba? Nakikita talaga natin dito, his authority po talaga, his, his power na meron siya. And he even displayed his authority to preach to forgive sins through the healing of a paralyzed man among many eyewitnesses. Diba? Yung ibang mga tao nga dito nag, nagtatanong, may, may authority siya na magpatawad ng kasalanan. Sino ba siya para magpatawad ng kasalanan? Diba? And his miracles became more and more public, healing a sick woman in the midst of the crowd that pressed in on him. So lahat po yan sa account po yan ng Matthew, sa book of Matthew. Raising the daughter of of the synagogue ruler from the dead as the crowd followed him, restoring sight to blind men by the, by the side of the road as crowds be, beheld him. So lahat po yun, no? nagpagaling ng bingi, amen, so nagpa, uh, nagpagaling ng bulag. So lahat po yun ginawa ng ating Panginoong Jesus. So the question is, ano po ba ang intention ng mighty works or miracles of Jesus? No? The intention of Jesus' mighty works being displayed among people was to bring them to the place of genuine repentance. So ito po ang intention at very purpose po ng ating Panginoon Jesus. Genuine repentance lang po ang kailangan niya at wala na iba. They, that they would change their minds toward Him. Ano ba ang mga nasa isip nung time na yun? No? Mga Pharisees, mga scribes, o yung mga nakakarinig sa Kanya, di ba? more on opposing Jesus Christ, more on questioning Jesus Christ, more on, more on asking Jesus Christ, where is the sign, di ba? And yun yung meron sa mind lang ng mga tao. They expect, alam mo yun, they expect na, they expect nila yung mga bagay na, na, na I mean, their, their own expectation lang ba? Parang sinaset nila yung, yung expectation according lang sa kanilang uh, paniniwala, according sa kanilang nalalaman, no? Allow Him to save them and be, become His obedient followers from, from then on. No, the purpose, the intention of it all is repentance. Wala pong ibang intention ng ating Panginoong Jesus sa kanyang mga ginawa, sa kanyang mga pinakita kung hindi repentance po. So sabi nga po sa Titus chapter 2 verses 11 to 14, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us for every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. Ito po, no? no God wants us to, to deny all our ungodliness, our worldly lust, no? And God wants us to live righteously, Godly po sa harapan ng ating Panginoon. So what is repentance po ba? No, the word, ito po ay kinuha po sa God questions po. Ito na, it's ano. The word repentance in the Bible liter literally means the act of changing one's mind. So the true biblical repentance goes beyond remorse, regret, or feeling bad about one's sin. So yun po, no, regret. No? Wala pong nangyaring regret or feeling na parang sa, that time na, 
na kumikilos ang Panginoon, nagpapakita sa kanila ang Panginoon, nangungusap sa kanila ang Panginoon. Wala talaga ni. Meron man pero kakaunti, especially po the Israelites nga po, which is, yun po ang pinakamission ng ating Panginoon sa kanila is to 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 save them, di ba? Because they are the lost sheep nga po. Pero wala pong nakitang response sa kanila na mag-regret or mag, mag-repent po sa kanilang mga kasalanan. Amen? Sabi nga, ang Panginoong Yesus po ay hindi, hindi po siya, na, um, He is not looking for any amazement or admiration, but Jesus was desiring a repentance. So yun lang po ang dinidesire ng Panginoon, walang iba. Kasi makikita nga natin, di ba, ang mga response ng tao, na amazed talaga sila sa ginawa ng Panginoon. Nag, di ba, nag-admire, sabi nga, yung word nga, they astonished, di ba, they were amazed sa mga ginawa ng Panginoon. But, no, hindi yun ang tinitignan ng Panginoon. Tinitignan niya ang puso na nag nanghihingi ng patawad sa kanya ang puso na nagpapakumbaba sa kanya. So yun po, mabilis lang po ba ako? So, in ver- uh, in, uh, point two po, uh, Jesus warns unrepentant cities. Amen? So, woe to you, di ba? Hindi kasi ako lalaki, pero kung sa lalaki ito, maganda ito eh. Woe to you, Corazin. Woe to you, Bitsaida. Na imagine ko si Pastor Job, mga gano'n. Woe to you. Talagang may bigat talaga ito, di ba? Kung nandun tayo sa time na to, di ba? Talaga siguro, kung ako yung baka kabahan na talaga ako nung kayo nagalit na si Lord, no? Sabi nga dito, woe to you, Corazin. Woe to you, Bitsaida, no? Sabi dito, woe means an interjection of grief or denunciation. So, meron po akong narini na, na, na napakinggan po na, na preacher, sabi po dito, or can actually translated, sabi nga po, horror to you, di ba nakakatakot? Horror to you, a, a great dilemma will happen to you. So, ito po yung warning ng ating Panginoon sa mga Pharisees and scribes and sa mga tao po na nakikinig sa kanya during that time siya po ay nagsasalita. No? Sabi niya, horror to you, a great dilemma will happen to you, great disaster will happen to you. Ito po, no? warning sa kanila. This is a strongest kind of negative dec- declaration that Jesus spoke to the people. Very negative po, di ba? Kung tayo makakarinig ng ganyan, may ganyang warning, no? Directly ang Panginoong Jesus, ano kaya ang magiging response natin, mga kapatid, no? Woe to you! Dilemma, disaster will happen to you if you will not repent. Ayan, ito nga po, makikita natin sa map, ang aking mapa na napakalino at napakaliit po na triangle. Ayan po, makiki- kasi yun po yung nakita ko sa ano. So, yun po, um, ang, ang, ang Corazine, Bethsaida at Capernaum po pa, pala during my ano pa nga po, study is, is, is a Jewish cities po sila. So, basahin ko po, kung, basahin ko po ang Corazine location and historical background. So, first po, Corazine, minsan po ay binabasa na Corazine. is located about two miles north of the Sea of Galilee. So, two miles north. So, ito po. Oh, and ito, triangle. Ayan. North, north of Sea of Galilee. So, ito po yung Sea of Galilee. Ito po yung Corazin. Ito po yung Bitsaidan. Ito po yung Capernaum. Ayan. So, from Corazin, you can see the Sea of Galilee. Makikita nga po natin. Bitsaida and some of Capernaum. So, Corazin was one of the three towns No, which made up the scholars called the Evangelical Triangle. So according po sa aking pag, ano po, sa source po sa aking mga ta, no, uh, Jesus set up his home ministry based in Capernaum, which was closed by Corazine. So ito po talaga, 50 to 60 percent po na ministry ng ating Panginoon is nasa Capernaum po, which is close po ang Corazine and Bethsaida. So makikita natin dyan yung triangle po dyan. Ayan, so sinabi ko na nga po kanina that Jesus spent around 50 to 70 of his ministry time around the northern shore of the Sea of Galilee. So those in Chorazin would have repeatedly heard and seen all Jesus did. So ma- ano talaga, ma- malaki talaga ang pagkakataon no? since Jesus Christ na po is nag-ministry sa Capernaum. Napakalaki po talaga na no? chance no? or, or privilege po talaga na makakarinig na maraming beses or makakakita po ng marapis ng Himala ang lugar na ito, which is ang Corazin. So, Jesus denounced those in Corazin because they rejected Him. So, that's the reason po why Jesus denounced, or why Jesus rebuked the, the city of Corazin because they rejected Him. They rejected kung ano yung mga ginawa ng ating Panginoon Jesus. His teachings, no, His miracle na ginawa na po sa kanila. 
And second po is Bethsaida. So, Bethsaida was a fishing village on the Sea of Galilee. In fact, its name means house of fishing. So, in John 1.4.4, we find that at least three disciples were from here. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. So, tatlong disciple po ni Jesus Christ ay taga Bethsaida. We also know that at least Peter and Andrew were fishermen. So, they lived in Bethsaida to be close to the sea. So, yun po. Jesus healed a blind man at Bethsaida. So, yun po. It was close by to Bethsaida where Christ fed the 5,000 men. So, ito familiar po tayo dito sa sa ginawaan na itong ating Panginoon. So, not far from Bethsaida is where Jesus walked on the water and calmed the sea. So, yan po, yan po yung mga nagawa ng ating Panginoon. Alam po marami pa po dyan, but ito yung tatlong kilala po na nagawa po ng ating Panginoon sa exactly sa Bethsaida or malapit sa Bethsaida. So, Christ denounced the town of Bethsaida because its inhabitants were uninterested, showed unbelief in Christ, and chose not to follow and obey Him. So, The same response po, no? Corazin saw it, Bethsaida saw it, or no, no, witness nila, but the same response. They reject, they ignore po sa lahat ng ginawa ng ating Panginoon. So, all three were Jewish cities nga po, sabi ko nga kanina, con- contrasted with the many Gentile cities elsewhere around the lake and in the Galilee area. So, Uh, there were so many Gentiles around, so nakapalibot nga po ang mga Gentile cities sa 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 Kapernao, sa Bitsaida and uh, Chorazin. So that area is even referred to as uh, Galilee of the Gentiles. So we know from the scripture that Jesus was sent primarily to the house of Israel, and it, and it is interesting that he also sent his disciples exclusively to Israel. Amen po ba? So, mababasa natin sa Matthew chapter 10, verses 5 to 6. These 12, these 12, Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Diba? Unang-unang instruction po ng ating Panginoon sa verse 10. No? Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. So, yun po ang pinakaunang Um, utos or mission nga po ng ating Panginoon is hanapin po ang mga lost sheep ng Israel. But what happened to them? They reject Jesus Christ. Kaya po naging ganito ang reaction ng ating Panginoon. Woe to you, Corazine. Woe to you, Bethsaida. Amen. So, di ba, parang kung ikaw yung sa sitwasyon, you're, try, you're trying to say, di ba, kung ikaw yung sa sitwasyon, nag, nagsasabi ka ng ng truth, but walang naniniwala sa'yo, di ba? Masakit talaga siya, parang, di ba? Uh, masakit, hindi madali, um, na, na, you're expecting them, you're desiring them to, re- to, to respond, di ba? Pero wala, wala kang nakita. So, ganun to po ang naramdaman ng ating Panginoon Jesus dito. So, uh, uh, point three, Jesus longs for sincere repentance. So, For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. So the verb to be done looks at Jesus' Galilean ministry as completed. So tapos na po, may ginawa po ang ating Panginoon Jesus. Tyre and Sidon, so were two cities of Phoenicia located north of Israel. So Both of these cities were strongly condemned in Old Testament for they they worship. So yun nga po in, in maraming beses po na mention itong uh, lugar na ito ang Tyre and Sidon. This is full of wickedness nga po and mga idolatry nga po, no? And and both of them were greatly punished by God for their sins. So makikita po natin sa Isaiah 23 sa Ezekiel sa Amos doon po kung uh, basahin natin about Tyre and Sidon, gaano sila ka-wicked ng mga cities. Uh, may mga uh, verses po dyan na makikita natin for our reference po. So, what is sackcloth and ashes po ba? No? Why Jesus Christ mentioned this sackcloth and ashes? Sabi niya, for if the mighty works done in you had been done Tyre and Sidon. So, no, kung isipin natin, wicked din naman to ang, ang Tyre and Sidon. No? They would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. So, first po is, what is sackcloth and ashes? Sackcloth 
and ashes were used in Old Testament times as a symbol of debasement, mourning, and or repentance. Someone wanting to show his repentant heart would often wear sackcloth, sit in ashes, and put ashes on top of his head. But ashes ang ano na Example po, um, based on ano po yung pag-aaral ko po. Example po is when Jonah declared to the people of Nineveh that God was going to destroy them for their wickedness, everyone from the king on down responded with, with repentance, fasting and sackcloth and ashes. So, sample po ito in Jonah chapter 3 verses 5 to 7, sabi nga po dito, and the people of Nineveh believed God. They called for a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them to the least of them. So the word reached to the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, removed his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. And he issued a proclamation and published through the Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything, let them not feed or drink water. So ito po ang naging response po nung hari po ng Nineveh. Nung when the time na narinig nila na God will going to destroy them because of their wickedness, ano po ang naging response nila? Immediately po, they repent fast po. No? They repent and do the fasting po. So immediately po, so during that time, they, they wore a sackcloth and sit on the ashes and iba po is naglalagay nga daw po ng ashes dito sa, sa ulo. So yung sackcloth po, po is made in goat material. So yung place po doon sa studyhan ko. Amen? So there are other uh, people din po in the Bible mentions where, wearing sackcloth including King Hezekiah, Eliakim, King Ahab, the elders of Jerusalem, Daniel, and the two witness and revelation. So that is sackcloth and ashes. So but I tell you, it will be more bearable, or in other translation, tolerable on the day of judgment for Tyre and Sidon than for you. So tolerable is used in its comparative form. So yun nga po, may mga verse na ibinigay dito. So it's like Jesus Christ is comparing one thing, tama po ba? One thing to another thing. Kinukumpara niya ng ganon. So Jesus Christ compare. Chorazin and Bethsaida to Tyre and Sidon, sabi niya nga. But it will be more tolerable so ganon, on the judgment day for Tyre and Sidon. So parang kung tatagalog natin, mas, gra um, mas, mas grabe ang judgment sa inyo, Chorazin. Mas grabe ang judgment sa inyo, Bethsaida. Kung ikukumpara natin sa Tyre and Sidon, nung time na nakarinig sila ng gospel, for sure, magre-repent sila. No, yun yung gustong isabihin ng Panginoong Jesus dito. Magre-repent sila. Sabi nga dito, Matthew, Matthew chapter 10, verse 15, Assuredly, I say to you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Ito po yung mga example po na gumagamit po ang ating Panginoong Jesus ng comparative form. He is comparing po the land of Sodom po. Amen? So, in Mark, uh, another, another example po is Mark chapter 6, verse 11, And whoever will not receive you nor hear you when you depart from there. Shake off the dust under your feet as a testimony against them. Assuredly, I say to you, it will more, it will more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of the judgment than for that city. So God is, Jesus Christ is using here a comparative form. So kinukumpara niya ang Chorazin at Bezaida sa Tyre and Sidon. So yun nga po. Ano po ba ang sinasabi ng ating Panginoong Jesus dito? He implied that there are in fact different degrees of judgment. Actually natanong ko nga po ito. Meron meron pa lang different degrees. I mean, ang ang, ang pagkakaintindi ko kasi dito is merong hindi masyadong mainit na apoy, hindi ganun-ganun po. Uh, medyo mainit, medyo mainit na mainit or depende sa kasalanan mo. Pero yun po yung unang pagkakaintindi ko. May, ano yan, si pastor nagaganon. Baka po may gusto kayong sabihin, pastors too. Nag, uh, wala po. Ayan, um, dito po sa part na to, um, um, ay, um, kung meron po kayong karagdagan or more clarification, please, unmute lang po immediately para po ma masettle po agad natin about sa ito. Kasi po ako natanong din dito, may different degrees po ba judgment? Ano po ba yun? Based po sa aking pag-aaral, may mga verses po na ibinigay sa akin Ito po, ang Panginoon, sa Matthew chapter 12, verses 36 to 37. Sabi dito, I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give account for every careless word they speak. But 
for by your words you will be justified and by your words you will be condemned. Meron din po sa Luke chapter 12 verses 47 to 48, sabi dito, And that servant who knew his masters will but did not get ready or act according to his will will receive a severe beating. So, um, 48, but the one who did not know and did what deserved a beating will receive a light beating. So, everyone to whom much was given of him, much will be required and from him to whom they entrusted much, they will demand the more. Amen. So, in Romans chapter 2, verse 6 to 8, ito din po, isa, he will render to each one according to his works. So to those who by patience in well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, he will give eternal life. So yun po yung different level of degree of judgment. So kung sino nga po talaga yung gumagawa na nagsisik ng glory or honor na papatuloy sa ating Panginoon, he will receive and give and he will receive eternal life. But those who are seeking, self-seeking, and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, there will be wrath and fury. So meaning, Chorazin and Bethsaida will be punished more severely in the final judgment than Tyre and Sidon. Um, yun nga po, mamaya, ano yun natin to, mamaya dito. Um, pero it doesn't mean po ang, 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 ang Tyre and Sidon is, is like they are saved. I mean, they are still in hell. Diba? Ang, pinupunto po dito, ang pinupunto dito po ng Panginoon, during that time kung nakarinig po ang Tyre and Sidon, for sure magre-repent sila. Kayo, Betsaida, grabe kayo, grabe kayo. Nakarinig na nga kayo, naka, nakakita na nga kayo, wala pa rin kayong response. So ito po yung sinasabi ng ating Panginoong Jesus. Amen? So, point uh, four po. Jesus pronounces judgment on their cities. Kapernaum, uh, basahin ko muna. And you, Kapernaum, Will you be exalted to heaven? You will be brought down to Hades. For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. So second comparative po na gumamit ang ating Panginoon. Kinumpara na naman po ng ating Panginoon ang Kapernaum to Sodom. So, for if the mighty works done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I tell you, that it will be more tolerable to the day of judgment for the Lamb so that was done for you. So, what is Capernaum? So, Capernaum was a fishing village located on the north side of the Sea of Galilee, not far from Jesus' home town of Nazareth. So, Capernaum was Jesus' adapt adapted hometown and the main center for Jesus' ministry. So, yun po, refresh lang po tayo about Capernaum. So, if anyone should have repented, it was the people of Capernaum. No, many miracles Jesus performed there. Many people Jesus had healed there. Unparalleled access they had to Jesus and His teaching. No? Kung meron nga po nga, nga po nga talagang lugar kung sino yung una dapat na magre-repent kasi nga doon nga po nag ang ating Panginoong Isus. Wala nang iba kung hindi ang ating Kapernaum. Hindi, walang iba kung hindi ang Kapernaum. Diba? I, I, kinumpara ng ating Panginoon ang Kapernaum sa Sodom. So ano nga ba ang Sodom, di ba? Sodom was one of the absolute worst cities in the whole Old Testament. There were not even 10 righteous persons in Sodom. The city of Sodom is used everywhere in in the Bible as an example of the greatest sin and the greatest punishment. Grabe, di ba? So if the Sodom narinig nila ito, no? For sure they will repent, for sure they will respond immediately, no? They will wear a uh, a sackcloth and ashes. So, yun po ang sinasabi ng ating Panginoon. Diba sabi nga dito, Are you, Kapernaum, you will be exalted to heaven? Sabi yan, no, 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 no. You will be brought down to Hades. Anong expectation nyo? Sa langit kayo mapupunta? Hindi. Sa Hades kayo mapupunta. Which is Hades? What is Hades? Hades is the place of departed spirit. In view of the Tower of Babel and exile, the Jews regarded Babylon as the worst of all cities. So, Hades is hell. Yun nga po, doon, pina, doon po, ah, uh, Yun, during the judgment ka po, darating ang Panginoon. So yun nga, bubuksan na ang book of life. Ano ang ginawa mo sa mundo? Pag ikaw ay hindi naging righteous at you still live dito sa mundo, yung mga gawa sa mundo, you're living in a sin. No? During the judgment, you will be put that place. No? Doon ang mga spirit po na hindi sumunod sa ating Panginoon Jesus. Sabi nga dito, meron pa bang iba? Meron pa bang ibang verse than Sodom, di ba? Sabi ng Panginoon. Yes, it is. It's the Capernaum. 
no because Capernaum rejected Jesus I mean kung aanuhin ba natin no meron pa ba di ba Capernaum because kayo nakarinig kayo nakik- nakakita kayo but still you reject me no on the day of judgment coming all those who have not repented will be punished po for their sins so ito pa nga po base nga po sa sa pag-aaral ko po the passage Uh, vividly illustrates the simple truth that the greater the revelation, the greater the accountability. So, yun nga po, tayo po, nakakita tayo mga kapatid, no, na, nakakilala tayo sa ating Panginoong Jesus. No, nakita natin ang light. So, meaning to say, there will be greater responsibility when, or accountability if we reject Jesus Christ. Grabe po ang, ang judgment po na mangyayari sa atin. So, the people of Chorazin and Bethsaida and Capernaum Jesus better than the people of Tyre and Sid- Tyre, Sidon and Sodom. Ito nga po yung kanina kong sinasabi. Mas kilala nila ang Panginoong Jesus. Mas nakita nila. Ikukumpara naman. Ikukumpara natin sa Tyre and Sidon. Amen. And therefore, they would receive a greater punishment because they did not repent. So we know Jesus better than the people people of Chorazin and Bethsaida and Capernaum. So, tayo po. di ba? We know Jesus better than them. Amen. We know about the cross, the resurrection, and we have the New Testament. We have the the book now, the Bible explaining who is Jesus, no? Who kung ano ang ginawa ng Panginoong Hesus sa atin. So with knowledge comes responsibility. So meron pong responsibility diyan, mga kapatid. Don't ignore. Amen. If there is a warning, if there is a word from God, Kapatid, malaki ang responsibilidad natin. Malaki ang responsibilidad mo. We have to respond po kung ano ang sinasabi ng ating Panginoon. If God is convicting convicting us right now to repent sa ating mga kasalanan, or our response sa ating mga Panginoon. Amen? So with knowledge comes responsibility. So we will receive a far greater punishment than even Corazon, Bethsaida, if we do not tayo, kung hindi tayo naniniwala ngayon if we reject the word of God no, mas malaki pa po ang judgment na marireceive natin kasi meron na tayong Jesus Christ kilala na natin siya no? Amen. so Jesus spoke about hell more than anyone else in all the scriptures no? he warns each of us about the coming of the judgment so wala na po dapat ano dito na bakit ano um, hindi mo po pinalalahanan walang warning na binigay sa atin ng Panginoon ang Panginoon po ay hindi nagkulang sa atin no alam natin niya binigyan niya tayo ng sapat na kaalaman na merong judgment na darating kaya kailangan hindi tayo magpa mag, magpa act na wala tayong alam amen mga kapatid sabi nga po sa Matthew chapter 13 this is how it will be at the end of the age The angel will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping gnashing of the teeth. So mga kapatid, no? During the judgment pa- judgment day po, saan ka? I mean, saan ka mapupunta? No? Doon ka ba ma-separate ka ba sa mga wicked or sa mga sa righteous? No? It ito po salita po to ng Panginoong Hesus sa atin nakakakilala tayo sa Panginoon, alam natin siya, na pag pinag-aaralan natin, minimilitid, pinagubulay-bulayan natin ng salita ng Panginoon, alat alam natin na darating ang judgment day. Amen. Saan po tayo doon? Time na bubuksan na ang book of life, sabi ng Panginoon. Saan tayo doon sa Kanya or doon tayo sa wicked? Amen. So in our conclusion po or application, The mighty works of God through Jesus Christ are designed for repentance. So ito po ang dinesign ng Panginoon. Not just for human betterment or para sa atin lang masatisfy tayo. May nakikita tayong ganong mga miracles ng Panginoon. Jesus Christ did most of His mighty works in the context of places in the cities where people did not repent. No, Jesus Christ warned those cities who continually reject His word. He warned that they will be a judgment day. There, there are degrees of pun- punishment at the last judgment and it will be more bearable for some, more tolerable for some. So yun po mga kapatid. Lahat po tayo mga kas- uh, mak- uh, makasasala. We are all sinners. 
and all of us need to repent po sa ating mga kasalanan. Amen? So baka meron pa tayo yung mga kasalanan dyan until now, binibaby pa nga natin or until now, hindi pa rin natin masurrender sa Panginoon. Mga kapatid, this is the time to repent and ask forgiveness sa ating Panginoong Jesus. Dahil may warning ang ating Panginoong Jesus. Amen? There will be judgment. So let us remember po that Jesus Christ already died on the cross. No? Binayaran niya na ang ating mga kasalanan. Amen? All we need to do is to repent, believe, and accept Jesus Christ. Yun lamang po, at kung may mga karagdagan po, open po ang lahat para mag-unmute ng kanilang mga ano po. Dagdagan niyo. Praise God. Thank you po. Close at asa. Ang po. Te. Wait po. Uh, uh, yan. Kasi makarek. Ito po ang ating, uh, ito po palang ating discussion questions. Uh, paki, ano na lang po, screenshot lang po sa inyong mga screen. Amen. Para may, Amen. Pastor, magdagdag po ba kayo? Ang po sabah. Dagdag po kayo, dagdag. Hmm? Di mag, mag prayer ka muna daw ate. Closing prayer ka muna. Bago mag- ah, sige po. Pastor. Closing prayer. Praise God. Maraming salamat po, Panginoon, sa oras na to. Lord God, sa salita mo at pinalalahanan mo, Panginoon. O God, na hindi that po are just God, Panginoon. At indeed, Lord, kami po ay makasalanan, Panginoon. Kami po ay... Uh, hindi ka rapat dapat sa inyo, Panginoon. O God, at indeed, Lord, ginawa mo ang lahat, Lord God, dito sa mundo. At Lord, sinave mo pa kami, Panginoon, sa lahat ng aming mga kasalanan, O God. And Lord, indeed, there will be a judgment day sa amin, O God. And Lord, sa pag- we pray, Panginoon, Lord God, um, kami po ay magpatuloy, Panginoon, Lord God, sa aming pananampalataya sa iyo, Panginoon. Amen. At hindi kami, Lord God, mag, uh, mag-wave, Panginoon, or tatalikod sa aming faith sa iyo. Sa iyo, O God, Lord, hallelujah, salamat sa salita mo, salamat sa pag-aalala, Lord God, and salamat, Panginoon, dahil napaki-easy lang po ng kailangan namin gawin, Panginoon, is just to repent, believe, and accept you, Lord Jesus Christ. Salamat, Panginoong Jesus, this is my prayer, this is all our prayers, in Jesus' name, Amen. Amen.